So just this morning, we got two big pieces of news. First of all, the new unemployment numbers came out and we found out that over the last three weeks, 17 million people have filed for unemployment. And we also got news of a new $2.3 trillion round of loans from the Federal Reserve aimed at propping up small businesses, local governments, as well as business and consumer credit. So that's what we're gonna talk about in this video is what this new $2.3 trillion package looks like, who these loans are geared towards, but we're also going to go back over the last three stimulus bills that were passed related to the virus that cannot be named so this video doesn't get demonetized, just so we have a big picture idea on the stimulus money so far that has been directed towards this economic crisis. So first of all, back on March 6th, we had the first bill passed, and that was the CB Preparedness and Response Supplemental Appropriations Act at a cost of $8.3 billion. And as you're going to see here, the amount of money in these stimulus packages really ballooned as the virus grew more and more out of control. And as we realized it was going to affect us here in the United States. But this initial stimulus package here was $8.3 billion. And of that money, 6.7 billion was designated for US aid and 1.6 billion was designated for international aid. Now that US aid went towards research and development of vaccines and therapies. Some money went to the CDC for prevention and response, as well as money sent to the FDA to assess potential disruptions of the supply chain, which we did see as a result of this pandemic with people rushing to the stores and buying up toilet paper, pasta, and other popular food products. And this also included $20 million for the Small Business Association, which when you compare that to the numbers that we're gonna look at in a minute here, as far as money being directed to small businesses, that is a very paltry amount of money. And then as far as the international aid goes, that went towards international response assistance, humanitarian assistance, as well as emergency evacuations of US citizens who were currently overseas in affected countries. So that was the very first bill we had in money that was directed towards the virus. And then we had the second bill, which came out a couple of weeks later. Now that bill came out on March 18th, and that was called the Families First CV Response Act at a cost of just $3.5 billion. And this bill in particular was aimed to offer paid leave for workers and families who were affected by the virus or had family members affected or had children who were currently unable to be in school or any kind of daycare program. And this bill primarily affected employers with 50 to 500 employees. And here's how it broke down. And this just recently went into effect at the beginning of April, so it's still very relevant. Basically, employees are required to get two weeks of sick pay at 100% of their normal rate of pay if they are affected by the virus or in quarantine waiting to be tested for the virus. Now beyond that, families would also get two weeks of sick pay at 66% or two thirds of their normal pay if they are taking care of a family member who is affected by the virus or a child who is unable to be in school or some kind of daycare. And lastly, employees who have been on the job for 30 days or more are entitled to up to 10 weeks of extended leave at 66% or two thirds of their pay if their children are unable to return to school or get some type of daycare service. So this primarily affects medium sized businesses. Uh, they did 50 to 500 employees because a lot of small businesses with under 50 employees have so few employees that they're very essential to the day-to-day -day operations. So they couldn't exactly afford to have people out for that period of time. So for the medium sized businesses, this provided families and employees the ability to have paid time off, either partial or full pay related to the virus themselves being sick, quarantining themselves, uh, children being out of school or family members being affected by the virus. So then we have the big one here, which is the CARES Act, 
which was passed on March 27th, which is the big stimulus bill that pretty much everyone out there is talking about. Maybe you haven't heard of these other two just because they were much smaller amounts of money, but this was the big $2 trillion stimulus bill, the largest one ever passed in history. And there's some major components here that a lot of us are familiar with. First of all, the $1,200 stimulus checks plus $500 per child. That is the biggest piece that affects your average person, you know, watching my channel here. We've done a lot of videos on the stimulus checks. It also included $367 billion in money directed towards small businesses uh, that was put in place to help out small businesses, essentially allowing them to receive a forgivable loan that can be used towards certain expenses, as well as two and a half months their normal operating payroll costs. This also included $500 billion in loans to big companies that were affected by the economic crisis, as well as some airline grants which break down as follows. It was $25 billion in cash grants to airlines, uh, $4 billion in cash grants to air cargo carriers, $3 billion in cash grants to airline contractors, as well as $150 billion in loans to state and local governments that were suffering. And this also included $130 billion of money being directed towards hospitals and other medical facilities that needed the aid. So that was the big one right here, guys. That's the one most of us have been talking about. But today, coincidentally, as the unemployment numbers again ballooned out of control, we had another stimulus package announced here, which is $2.3 trillion of loans directed towards Main Street small businesses, as well as state and local governments, and money directed towards freeing up credit lines for both businesses and consumers. So here's how this breaks down. So first of all, we have $600 billion in loans directed towards small to medium-sized businesses making reasonable efforts to keep employees on payroll. And I believe the main reason why we're seeing this is because so many people are out there trying to get at that PPP money. Uh, it is drying up very quickly, so they had to do something to expand that. Now, the PPP program is a forgivable loan where most people won't pay that back. These loans are loans that you would, in fact, be paying back to the federal government. So if you are a small to medium sized business, this is how these $600 billion worth of loans are going to work. These are going to be four year term loans for businesses up to 10,000 employees, and the loans will range from $1 million to 25 million. Now, as far as the interest rate goes, the rate is going to be two and a half to 4% above the federal funds rate. And the most important part here, principal and interest payments will be deferred for one year. So it's essentially a very low interest loan for small to medium businesses where they pay nothing for the first year and then they pay it back over a four year term, which will allow them to free up cash to keep employees on payroll and run normal business operations. Now, who's paying for these loans? The majority of this money is coming from the Federal Reserve. Um, the regular banks themselves are going to buy up just 5% of the loans, and 95% of these loans are going to be backed by the Federal Reserve, aka printing money. Essentially, they're just throwing free money out there for businesses that are currently struggling. A very small amount of this is actually being backed by the banks. Now, in addition to that, there was also $500 billion in additional loans to state and local governments that are struggling to combat the virus and the shutdowns. And lastly, the biggest component here, $850 billion aimed at expanding credit lines for households and businesses. So as the banks are struggling and possibly reeling in their credit lines for consumers and businesses due to the economic slowdown, they are going to be pumping money into the system allowing banks to offer lines of credit that will be backed by the Federal Reserve. So in a nutshell here, the idea behind this $2.3 trillion of new loans for the Federal Reserve is to get small to medium sized businesses much needed capital to stay afloat and keep employees on payroll. It's going to help prop up state and local governments and free up credit lines for businesses and consumers to encourage spending while also allowing people um, the potential money here for emergency type situations, whether it's a family in need of uh, supplies or groceries or a business in need of tapping a line of credit 
uh, you know, for inventory or to stay afloat. But anyways, guys, that is a wrap up on the new loans from the Federal Reserve, as well as the past three major stimulus packages related to the virus. Uh, will there be more money to follow? We'll have to see. It's going to be based on unemployment numbers that come out and uh, everything we see happening in the next couple of weeks. But just between this right here, you know, we have over $4 trillion of money here that has been basically printed uh, to aid in this crisis. But thanks so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this quick update. If you did, please smash a like for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe and hit that bell for notifications. And lastly, guys, if you want to get two free stocks, Webull is offering a free promotion right now where if you sign up for a brokerage account with them, you're going to get one free stock just for signing up. Then you fund it with $100 or more on your initial deposit and you'll get a second free stock. So if you want some of your own free money there, guys, Webull's got a great offer there for those two free stocks. That's going to be the top link down in the description below. But thanks so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one.